Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I filmed a video about my classroom again, but this time you get to see my classroom when it's fully ready and prepared for the kids tomorrow morning. Tomorrow is our first day of school, and so I am very excited to share my classroom with my students. I show you different places around the classroom as well as how I use different things in my classroom. I hope you enjoy it. Don't forget to comment and like and subscribe. Okay, we're gonna start with the outside of my classroom. This is um, the place where I will put my students' work. So you can see it says amazing work coming soon. And I have Mickey's for the boys and Minnie's for the girls. And at the top I chose to write, don't just fly, soar, because that is a quote from Dumbo, which is a Disney quote. Now we're gonna walk this way. And so this is my door and it just has that Mickey border that I showed in one of my videos. And at the top I just wrote Mrs. Sims. This is um, just a little chart that shows people where I'm at when we are not in our classroom. And so we will just move this clothespin. We'll go ahead and come right inside. So starting with my door, this is just a little welcome sign that I have and I have put the students' names on um, the door. So this is the wall that um, you see first when you walk into my classroom. Here is where I keep um, what how my students get home. And so we can have car riders, walkers, bus riders, daycare buses and a kids club which is the afternoon program at our school. And so these clips just help to remind me how the students will go home. Sometimes parents send me an email at the beginning or I get a note at the when the students arrive at 8 a.m. and so by 3 p.m. I have forgotten. So this really helps me um, remember how kids will be going home at dismissal. I also keep my calendar here and this is not the calendar that I use when I'm teaching the students but I do like to have this up because it helps them spell the days of the week also whatever month we're in. And we also have a today's weather um, little graph. And this also helps them spell these words that they might not know how to spell. This is our special schedule and this is our schedule for all day. Here I keep the students' names, first and last names, which is why I've covered them up for confidentiality purposes. But it also has them in um, number order because that is how they line up when we're going anywhere and they're lining up. Um, moving on, this is a door that leads to our closet. And I think I'm gonna make this my science word wall. Um, next is my mailbox station. This is the mailbox that I talked about um, my father-in-law making for me. I finally sanded it down and painted it. I did miss a few spots, so I'm gonna have to go back and fix that. But I also, these are the clips that I showed in my hall, teacher hall video, and I just numbered them so that way the students know which little slot belongs to them. Up above that is my happy birthday wall, and these cupcakes I actually made a few years ago, and um, I used to put candles on top of them with the student's name and the date of their birthday, but this year I'm actually gonna take their picture with them holding the date, so whatever number if their birthday is October 20th, they will hold up a 20 and I will put their picture under October. Moving on this way. This is just our sink station and um, I just have storage here where I keep um, like Ziploc bags, uh, tissue paper, and here we keep our indoor recess items. Um, let's see. Down there we keep some markers, and here we keep some just arts and crafts STEM type things. But this section here is where they were they will get pencils if they have, so they already have pencils in their toolboxes at their desk or in their chair pocket. But if um, one of their pencils is not sharpened anymore, they can just put it in the dull pencils um, little bucket and get one from the sharp pencils bucket. And I will have a helper who maybe at the end of the day or every other day will come and sharpen the pencils for me. That way we have sharpened pencils at all times. 
So this is the door that leads to our bathroom. Over here is, oh, and on this door, I'm gonna make it um, my blends and word family door where I will put those posters up. So if the students forget or just need help, it's like an anchor chart. Um, they can look back at that door. So I will post them up there as I introduce them. This is our leveled library in our classroom. And so these are some of the books that the students will get to pick depending on what level they're at. Um, this is our phonics wall and we do um, phonics dance at the school I work at. And so as soon as I introduce those um, hunks and chunks, I will put those posters up as well. This is where the students will turn in papers. Um, so this again is just storage for me. I have pencils, I have erasers, I have some scissors here. I have um, just miscellaneous little things that I use, clips, clothes pins, Velcro stickers. I also have um, tape and paper clips and post-it notes in here. Um, this section has just regular lined paper that I use sometimes in my word work center. I also have things that I post up, so like my phonics dance hunks and chunks. Here are my blends. And these are my word families. And um, just little things that I use to post around the room I'm gonna have there. This is actually something that I use. Um, clickers, if you guys ever heard of clickers, these are the cards that the students use when um, responding to questions on there. These are just inferencing cards that I will use whenever we teach inferencing. Um, moving on, oh, and up there it just says, light up your imagination, read. And I just thought that was a cute poster. I've had that for a few years now. So this corner here, this is my horseshoe table where I will sometimes have small groups. I mean, small groups really varies. It depends on where students are, but sometimes this works better, so I use this. Um, back here, I just have supplies that are readily available for you know any small group activity that I might be working on. Um, I have some Lincoln cubes here. And down here, I just um, have these boxes that I have labeled. One of them is labeled math, the other one is labeled reading. And these are just anchor charts that I have printed out and I use when teaching certain concepts. So I just like to have them in a box so I know where to look when I'm looking for a certain anchor chart to teach um, or introduce the concept to the students. This little um, storage space, this really what I use the most are these um, one, two, three, four, five drawers and they're labeled Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And that's where I put the worksheets or any book that I'm using on either day for the week. That way I can just come in in the mornings, open the drawer up and have everything that I need for that day. Um, this is my filing cabinet. And in here, there's not a lot of stuff. Sometimes I'll file copies in there or when I get the students um, folders that have their writing samples and their reading levels, I will store those in here. But back here, I also have these little storage bins and I have two of them. And I usually have um, six groups of students when I'm doing um, reading with them and small group. And so I will, I have group one, two, three, four, five, and six. And so I'll label these with group one, group two, and I'll put their books in here or any other materials that I need for those students. That way it's just easy for me to get them. I don't have to search anywhere for them and it just saves me time. So this is um, where I keep their leveled, the leveled books that are in my personal library. And so I just took the time to level them one year and um, I have leveled them by K, L, we have G, H, I, we have, most levels that the first grade students will go through. And so having them labeled like this and sectioned off helps the students pick a book quicker and pick a book on their level so they're not reading books that are not on their level that are maybe too easy for them and they're just speeding through them or are too hard and they're getting frustrated. And that's when they decide and start to think, oh, maybe I don't like to read, but that's not the case. It's just you're not reading a book that's on your level. Um, so I also have some books that are like holiday and in here I have Thanksgiving books, Halloween books, um, St. Patrick's books, and then here I have some nonfiction books. 
Then down here, I have Dr. Seuss books, fiction, animal books. So they're all books about animals that are fiction. And then also um, nonfiction animal books. Um, and then I have enough books to fill up one bin. So I have just a Christmas bin as well. Um, then down here, I have my stem bins. So this is where I'm planning on storing my stem bins. I also have these little crayon inserts that I said I would sort different colored crayons on. So those I'm gonna keep down there too. And these will probably get filled out throughout the year, not necessarily at the beginning of the year. I also have their um, little offices that I give each child. And this just reminds them, for example, it gives them what can I write about if they're ever stuck when writing in the writing station or if we're just writing and they don't know what to write about. This will give them some ideas about things that they can write about. It also um, shows them how to spell numbers one through 20. It shows them different shapes and how to spell them. It also has money on here. It has fractions. And, oh, I also have days of the week here, so they can, they don't necessarily need to walk up to the calendar, but sometimes students need to walk just to get their, you know, giggles and wiggles out, and so that's fine, but if they don't want to walk up there, they can just look in here. Here, I also have a number line, I have a 120 chart, and I have the alphabet out here, and it's written so they know exactly, you know, what letter goes up to the um, roof what letter goes down to the basement and that's something that we will discuss at the beginning of the school year and it's the handwriting house um, so you teach the students you know which levels or which letters go up to the window or up to the roof to the floor to the basement and that just serves as a little reminder for when they are writing and their penmanship might not look all that great so you just refer back to this, but again, it's taught at the beginning of the year. And this is their number, so student number seven will get this office. And I will probably have to remake these maybe next year because they're starting to look a little rough. And so up here, this is my writing board, and that's just where I'll put anchor charts that maybe remind the students of any writing, um, writer's workshop concepts we've learned about, or just... Also, maybe an anchor chart that reminds them of different things that they can write about, different small moments. Um, this is also like the rubric that they use in kindergarten. So we start with it at the beginning of the year here, and it's just, um, it's the five star rubric. I couldn't remember if it was five or four, but it's five stars. And so it just tells them, use a capital letter to start the sentence, um, use punctuation at the end of the sentence, use finger spaces, use neat handwriting, and last, they need to read their sentence to make sure that it makes sense. Um, the students in kindergarten, they're giving themselves stars. So by the end of the year, they have plenty of stars on their um, drafts or their papers, and it just serves as a reminder. So we will use this when we start first grade also. This is where I keep my centers, and this is how I rotate the students. Whoever my student helper is, the person helping me for that day, they're the ones that come in and move the clips. And so that's how the students know what station they should be on um, during what day. So that's the reading stations. These are the math stations. And so math, I use numbers and reading, we do the daily five, so I'll use those. And that's also what I have where I actually store my stations at. So the students know exactly if they are at the number one star, they have a number one star over there so they don't get confused. So this section, there is a little couch. This was an extra piece of furniture that my husband and I had at our house and we need to get rid of it. And when I moved into this classroom, there was this blank spot. So I decided to bring it up here. I think the kids will really enjoy it. And um, I'm just gonna use it. Maybe I thought about using it as a cool down spot or maybe um, just as something the kids can earn. So if they wanna do their work on the couch, they can do that, but they have to earn it. I, I need to play with it at the beginning of the year and see what I decide. But then up there, I just have a welcome sign that actually somebody gave to me this year. Um, they found it and they didn't want it anymore or something. And I don't think I've said this, but every classroom at this school has their own theme. And my students are Miss Sims Owls. That is new this year and it's perfect because as soon as you walk in, 
you can see that and it says welcome. So I hope the students feel welcomed. Okay, so this spot here, these are cubbies that the students have and some of them actually brought all of their supplies for Meet the Teacher. So that's why some of them have binders in them. These are their book boxes and I have just numbered them with um, their numbers. And so this is cubby number 11, book box number 11. And the kids will get to decorate these um, at some point this first week of school. And so those are their cubbies. These are just little like camping chairs that I use that I bought at Academy one year and at a different grocery store another year. And these, the kids love to read to themselves in these. And so um, these we use during reading stations. Um, these are just shelves that I had extra books that I needed to hold in and these um, clipboards. So these I will give each student one. Sometimes we do whole group um, working on a sheet or working on something that we need something hard to and a pencil and so we use these and sit on the rug together and so these come in handy. Also sometimes when students don't finish their work um, and they've had you know enough time to do so but they're either playing or talking or doing something they're not supposed to they can take this clipboard outside during recess and finish their work that usually motivates them to hurry up and finish it so they can go play outside so up here this is my reading section for my classroom where i will put up some of the anchor charts that we use during the school year when i'm teaching certain um concepts maybe like Pi and author's purpose or story elements, characters, setting, problem solution, things like that. And that just helps the students because when I introduce each concept, I will show them the anchor chart. And so if they ever forget and we're reviewing that same concept, I can just point up here and they know exactly what I'm talking about most of the time. So these are some more cubbies that the students have. Here I have those, so these are those dry erase labels that I talked about. I have not put these on their boxes yet because like I said earlier, they will decorate them some point this coming up week and so I will do that after. That way they're not putting markers or crayons on top of this. Um, and up here, is this is our math section and that is again just like the reading section, that is where I will put math anchor charts that will help the students when they are working on certain concepts that they might not be sure about. This way. Okay, so this here is my teacher corner and this is where I have both my computers, the computer that hooks up to the smart board and just my regular computer where I can take attendance and do things like that. This um, container here is one of the ones that I bought at Target. This is where the students will be expected to place their daily folder every morning when they walk in the classroom. Um, this is uh, where I put my lunch count and they come and pick it up in the morning. And back here, I just have a printer and my um, refrigerator down here where I will keep my lunch and water bottles. Um, I have my phone there. And this is just a section where I just keep a number of things that I use in the classroom. I have pens, I have um, great job certificates, I have happy birthday certificates, I have um, positive office referrals, nurse slips, just anything that I need I keep back here. Um, this part here is my rug and this is where most of the teaching takes place most of the things that we do whole group, this is where it will take place. This is my easel where we sometimes create our own anchor charts, the anchor charts that are not printed out. And I do that on here because it's easier. Um, this is just my regular whiteboard where I keep my objectives. And this is my champ section and that's just expectations that the students will learn for different um, times throughout the day. That's my smart board. I love that thing. It's great for interactive learning. That's where we do our lunch count. That's where we do our calendar, a lot of spiraling. And up here is my alphabet strip. It did, it was higher up when I moved into this classroom, but I lowered it down because that will be my sight word wall. And so all my sight words for the letter P will go directly above the letter P and so on. So this is my chore chart. This is where I assign 
you know, I think I have one, two, three, four, five, five different students who each week have a job. And so I have a line leader, a door holder, a pencil sharpener, teacher assistant, and a librarian. And so basically the librarian just fixes our library up and makes sure that it doesn't look a mess before we go home at the end of the day. Um, the line leader is the line leader. The pencil sharpener, the pencil sharpener doubles up and will usually sharpen pencils and they are also our caboose. So we don't sharpen pencils every day, so I felt bad and last year I just implemented those together and so whoever is sharpening the pencils that week is also the caboose for our classroom. They're the ones that turn off the light and close the doors every time we leave our classroom. Um, these little pockets here, this is where I keep their names and so we start off in the red and so those kids get placed and the next week when I pull those down I put them in the blue and that way I know that those kids already had a job and I don't pick the same ones over and over again because they all love to be a part of this chore chart and they just love to help. Okay, so lastly, these are the students' desks and their tables. Some of them have their own desk. Some of them are at a round table and they all have chair pockets. So um, some of them have a little bit more storage. I have to play with it. Some kids do just fine with just a chair pocket, others struggle. So depending on the student, I will move them. Also depending on whether they are talking too much to a buddy or something, they will get moved as well. But these are the chair pockets here. So these chair pockets, they have inserts for like pencils or markers, erasers, whatever you may need. This is where you put this child's name so they know where they sit. Here they can put notebooks, their toolbox. Here they can put some folders. So these really come in handy. I got them on Amazon um, last year and I just love them because they're just, they save space also. And actually last year I was in a smaller room, a little bit smaller room. And so I chose not to use the desks. And so I just had tables and this really helped me save space and just gave the students a place to store their personal items. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you maybe took some things away to use in your classroom. If you have any comments or maybe some suggestions, please go ahead and leave those down below. If you're not subscribed and you'd like to watch some more of my videos, go ahead and subscribe, like the video. Thank you again and have a great school year. Tomorrow's my first day. I'm so excited.